talk today about bidding habits at a glance. Your repeatable bidding habits increase your win rate. We're going to interview Mr. Gabe Hamda. So you want to know what bid more means? Let's talk about it. Bid more is a program that equips local small businesses to win contract bids at local, state, and federal and other organizations in the order shown. This YouTube channel is dedicated to training and coaching local and small businesses on estimating and proposal writing. We encourage you to subscribe to this bid more channels to receive updates, tips, and guidelines so that you are empowered and have the confidence to bid more and win more contract bids. This segment of our presentation features bidding habits at a glance. Your repeatable bidding habits increase your win rate by Gabe Hamda. My name is Terry Kelly. I'm one of the Bid More consultants, and I will be interviewing my colleague, Gabe Hamda, who is our Bid More consultant. Hello, Gabe. Welcome. How are you? Good day, Terry. What a pleasure to be speaking with you about bidding habits. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time out to speak with us today. All right. So I'm sure you have some wonderful information to share with us. So let's go ahead and, and get started with, uh, with, with our day today. So Gabe, how about telling us a little bit um, about understanding, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to start with you speaking about habits and bidding. Can you introduce your topic for us? Can you give us a little information about it? Uh, Terry, again, thank you so much for uh, asking that question. So first, I think we just want to make sure our audience understands and captures the topic. So the topic here is bidding habits at a glance. We're just going to give you a glimpse of bidding habits, and which is basically your repeatable bidding habits increasing your win rate. So that's the topic. Say it again. Bidding habits at a glance, your repeatable bidding habits increase your win rate. So that's the topic. And we'll be talking about the connection between bidding and habits and how the two work together for your advantage. Hmm. Okay. That sounds pretty interesting, Gabe. So how about sharing with us your firsthand experience with habits and bidding? Yes, Terry. Habits and bidding go together, okay? Now, when you have the habits of bidding, bidding can be easy. You can do more of it and you can win more. And so basically I represent ICAP Professional Services. And here at ICAP, we live by bids and we develop habits around bids. And so I'm gonna get into it a little more later, what these habits are. But for now, let me just tell you, what we want every local small business that wants to bid to do is to build the habits of bidding and some specific habits within it. So uh, my whole experience is around habits and repeatable habits, winning habits. So that's what we want to develop. Okay, thank you. So you keep using the term habits. Let's start with that. Let's start with your definition of habits in everyday life and in bidding. Perfect. So in everyday life, uh, Terry, you know, you, I'm sure you have many habits that work to your advantage and also habits that you want to get rid of, correct? Correct, yes. <laughs> okay. So basically habits are good or bad, are actions that you do automatically without even thinking. For example, you know, we blink, right? We blink on a regular basis without thinking. And, right. you know, we take in oxygen without thinking. So there are so many just natural habits and then there are some adopted habits, okay? So mm -hmm. let's say, you know, if someone is talking, we have the habit of, you know, quietly listening and then waiting when they are done and speaking. So these are habits 
in everyday life. So basically it is an automatic action that you do without thinking. Uh, so I think in, another, in other words, habits are your second nature. It's things that you do that are either natural or adopted that are your second nature, okay? So basically, you know, habits are, you know, gonna give us our survival, uh, survival kind of traits or survival um, behaviors. So in other words, you know, let's say if something hits us, we cover ourselves or we run from it. So, uh, you know, just habits are ways of surviving in society that we live in. Let's say if someone approaches us, you know, with some kind of strange noise or, you know, asking us for money, we just don't give in. So, you know, we have the habit of, you know, asking questions or when you are suspicious to get away from that scene. So these are just some of the habits in natural life. So for a minute, Terry, just to kind of think about habits in everyday life, what are some of your habits, your good habits? <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> I think I have a little both, good and bad. Um, so let's see, that's a good question, Gabe. I think some of my good habits are, I'm pretty uh, predictable in the morning. I have my morning routine uh, that I do as far as getting ready before going to work. Um, so there are a few steps, a few things that I do before I walk out the door. So that's like my, my habit. Um, I'm pretty routine with my path from my house to my job. There's, there's a couple of different ways I could probably go, but I choose one way all the time. And a semi good slash bad habit is I, I make a pit stop before going to work. Tropical smoothie is just my thing. So I have to have my smoothie in the morning. So that's my habit that I have developed almost every morning. So I have my habits too. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. You know, I think one thing that uh, reminds me uh, from what you said is that, you know, we, I think all, most of us want to look fantastic when we go out, you know, we check ourselves in front of a mirror, right? Yes. So I think, you know, checking the mirror may be one habit that I think most of us have. And when we drive, you know, we use a seatbelt. You know, there was a time when seatbelt was not required. And so every time we enter a car, you know, we turn on our uh, seatbelt. So uh, these are just some life habits. And, you know, I think with that said, all of us have, have you know, good habits. And once maybe one adopted habit I have, which I have been using the last, you know, eight to 10 years, mm -hmm. is whenever I speak with people, I ask them their joyous moment of the day or their joyous moment of the week. Mm -hmm. Terry, have you ever been subjected to that question in my, your conversation with me? I have. <laughs> yes. Do you know why I asked that question? Why do I ask? Strangers? Why do you ask that question, Gabe? Well, you know, my reason is, you know, I think when you engage asking people their joyous moment, you know, kind of helps them to be grateful, helps them to think of positive things. And I believe it will help myself and people I'm speaking with to build our immune systems while we are talking. If we talk about something depressing, about a negative habit, it's repeating that experience all over again. For that reason, it's one of my adopted habits of asking people joyous moments. Mm, I like That's another that. subject by self, right? <laughs> yes, it probably could be. I like that concept, though. I like that that meaning behind that. I, I, I never thought of it that way. So uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, all right, Gabe. So let's see. Moving on along. Let's uh, get into habits and bidding. What are bidding habits, Gabe? Uh, so... Uh, basically, this is kind of where we get into uh, bidding habits, specific habits that we've developed at ICAT and that we share with other, you know, local small businesses for their success. So I'm just going to go down the list. And okay. in one of the habits, uh, one of the bidding habits is the habit of regularly checking client bid websites to identify opportunities. In other words, 
you know, when you are bidding on a local government or a state government or federal or anything, you know, it's very likely that bid may be posted somewhere on a website to check that website on a regular basis. And the reason being, there may be updates, there may be cancellations, there may be, you know, the bid due date may have been pushed off to another date. So you want to check on a regular basis. There may be addendum. There may be question and answer posted. So you want to regularly check the website to see updates. So that's a habit we at ICAT have developed and we want to convey to other bidders to do the same. Okay. Nice. The second habit is the habit of regularly doing bid, no bid analysis, meaning if something looks good and let's say you are in construction, if it says construction, you may may not qualify. You may may not be interested. It may, may not be within your, truly your wheelhouse. So you wanna go through the habit of regularly deciding bid, no bid analysis, okay? Because let's say if you spend one full day or six hours or three days of working on it, and then you come to a point where you don't qualify, you are not interested, it's too much, whatever. It's a wasted energy. So you always want to go through bid, no bid analysis, okay? Mm -hmm. And third habit is the habit of reading bidding information. So, you know, there is an instruction from the client. What is the minimum requirement? What is the evaluation criteria? What is the bid submission and instruction, all of these things you gotta read to be in compliance and for you to have a good shot at winning. I'm sure, Terry, uh, you have your own YouTube topic presentation on reading instructions, correct? Correct. Yeah, so understanding and reading the instructions is one of the habits, one of the habits. And let's, you know, just kind of maybe a little more on that. You know, the client may have published, you know, 150 pages of a bid document. So there are essential pages you got to go to. So, you know, everything, some, some of the items may be just legalese and some of the items may be just a boilerplate, but you want to read the important parts, you know, like the minimum requirements and the scope of work and bid submission uh, instructions and evaluation criteria. I mean, these are the things you really want to take closely to see, um, you know, how well you fare. Fourth right. habit, the habit of preparing your bid proposal based on bid requirements. So you don't want to just go ahead and tell your whole story how fantastic you are. You want to specifically answer the request uh, in the bidding requirements, okay? Number five, mm -hmm. the habit of using a compliance checklist to finalize work before submission. In other words, you know, the client may have requested that you do it in five pages. I mean, we have gone on and wrote a 50 page bid proposal. So you want to list all the requirements so that you don't overlook, you don't forget. So you want to put all of them in a checklist to kind of help you because the more things you have in your head to remember, you are bound to forget, right? Very so true, yes. You want to make sure you have uh, a checklist. Uh, number six is the habit of logging your bidding activities. Like, you know, you may work as a team and one of you may have bid on an item. And then if there is another team member, the more you keep track of the items, you know, it kind of saves you from duplicating effort. Or if you submitted a similar bid, Six months ago, you can reuse that same material. So logging your, you know, creating a log sheet for your bidding activities can keep you keep a record. And then, you know, also keep track of your win rate. You know, you can say, okay, this one we did not win. And you can get, you know, some kind of debrief. This one we won, you know, what did we win? So, you know, having a log will be a good habit. Last but not least, the habit of saving your final bid submissions for future use. And guess what? You know, when you submit a bid, you want to save your final submission because next time you may be doing something similar, you may want to reuse it because it can save you energy, save you time, and always save the last versions for future use. So in a nutshell, these are the seven habits we at ICAT use that we want to convey 
to other local small businesses. Let me kind of quickly go, go over the seven habits. It's almost like a seven habits. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you are aware of the seven habits of highly successful people, right? Of course. Yes. So I don't know whether we got it from there, but you know, seven habits. I'll quickly go over them. The habit of regularly checking client bid websites to identify opportunities. Number two, the habit of regularly doing bid, no bid analysis. Number three, the habit of reading bidding information. Number four, the habit of preparing your bid proposal based on bid requirements. Number five, the habit of using a compliance checklist to finalize work before submission. Number six, the habit of logging your bidding activities. And number seven, the habit of saving your final bid submission for future use. So these are, you know, bidding habits that ICAT uses on a regular basis. Our entire team tries to use these guidelines, these habits, and we want to convey to others that these will be repeatable bidding habits that increase your win rate. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Gabe, for sharing all of that wonderful information. So, so if I understand you correctly, if we use these repeatable habits, what you shared was what ICAT uses for their repeatable habits. But if we implement these seven repeatable habits, I will be able to increase my winning rate of winning a bid. Does that sound about right? Absolutely. So it increases. So these do not guarantee. I mean, like we've used these habits and there are some we did not win because, you know, we are not the only ones who did. There are others who did who can do better than us. Guess what? It increases our win rate. And also it is a lot of fun when you use these habits. And at the same time, it's easier on you when you use these habits. If you just every time you start from scratch, and anything happens, you may be wasting a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of time. So these right. meeting habits are good for your health, good for your process, increase your chance, and easy on you if you want to do this. It's, I'm sure for any business, bidding is not the only thing you do, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. So it's not the only thing you do. You have other things. So this creates uh, such a process, an easy process, so that you can do bidding while you are running your business. Absolutely. Anything to kind of help ease the process and transition to going from one, one job to the next job, all the different biz that you want to try to go for. So, all right. Great information. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, now let's look at the, the benefits of bidding habits. What are some benefits of bidding habits, Gabe? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. So, you know, the benefits of uh, developing repeatable, you know, again, habits are repeatable. It's something you do all the time, not only sometimes, not only when you feel it, right? Right. So the benefits include, one, you know, uh, these habits ensure that you remember and not forget important requirements and steps. If it's just like anything goes, one day you may, you know, you may forget to do you know, uh, bid no bid and you may be wasting your time, right? right? Or if you forget the habit of checking the website of the client requirements, you know, they may have published an addendum you missed and that may have canceled and you submit your bid, you know, just reading the first requirement and guess what? It's just right. like you wasted that energy, made that copy without really checking what's going on. So these habits really help you to remember and not forget important requirements and steps. Okay, that's one benefit. Another benefit is kind of, it allows, uh, let's say your virtual team members to produce the same deliverable. So look, it may be you and one of your teaming partners and maybe one of your other teaming partners who may be located in different places. So uh, all of you will be able to produce the same deliverable working virtually. ICAT, works virtually, our team members are spread, you know, over different geographic uh, areas and uh, we are able to produce the same uh, proposal whether it is, it is done by one person or another and it creates consistency. Also, uh, these habits contribute to creating organizational culture. So, you know, let's say the habit of 
you know, saving your final, uh, final deliverable, you know, the culture of conserving resources kind of creates a, a culture of now waste conserving resources. And also, you know, the habit of doing your due diligence and when, you know, bid no bid is also a culture of evidence-based. So you don't decide to go for a bid, not on emotion, but based on facts and evidence. So it can help you create organizational culture, a desirable, a growing, sustainable organizational culture, okay? So for these reasons, you know, bidding habits just like life uh, can be very crucial for an organization that relies on uh, winning bids. All right, thank you for sharing that information, Gabe. All right, so I'm gonna kind of recap. You you told me the what a repeatable bidding habit is. You've also shared about why repeatable bidding habits are important. So I think here's kind of a, a major big question here, Gabe, you ready? So here's yeah. the question, the yeah. how. How do you build a, a bidding habit or a repeatable bidding habit? How do you do this? Yes, excellent question. So, you know, like, uh, yes, you know, since this is kind of more like an overview or uh, bidding habits at a glance, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, we answered the what questions, what, you know, what are some of the repeatable habits you want to develop? Uh, we went over the benefits and now it is time to talk about the how. How do we do it? So let me give you kind of three for a start. Uh, number one, you want to research best practices. You know, just we just shared with you, um, you know, seven of them. And guess what? I think you can use any of these. Uh, these are a gift to you. So you can use them because these are based on our experiences. Best practices are things that have worked for other organizations. And you may Google and find out, uh, you know, other bidding habits that other organizations use or when you, Talk to other local small businesses, you may find out some of the habits they use that you may want to adopt, right? So right. that would be one source. Uh, another source is through your own experience. Uh, you know, perhaps you want to brainstorm with your team members to, to add your own to it so that it really works for you, right? Right, uh, yes. And so, uh, for example... You know, one of, you know, one of the things you come across, you know, in, in your bidding experience with your team, maybe, you know, some people may be, uh, you know, good in graphic arts and some people may be good in writing. And let's say if you want to blend both and maybe you want to have the habit of always adding some kind of graphical representation for a visual appeal. So you want to say, hey, after you do the first draft, uh, perhaps you want to add a checklist to kind of add some graphical image or something. So anyway, some kind of way of learning from your own journey so that it is something you can use. Last but not least, on a periodic basis, when you know periodically meaning whether it's on a monthly or a quarterly basis, update your list of habits based on experience and what works. So the fact you develop, you know, these habits for your organization today, in six months, there may be some new development. Maybe there are lessons. There may be additional, you know, situation experiences, good experiences that you have. And so uh, for that reason, you want to update on a regular basis. So um, let me kind of say a conclusion, uh, just maybe give one example. There was a time I got submitted a bid that we want. So I was interested in learning what was the basis of our win. So, you know, hey, you can say you know, it may be a prize. It may be the quality of our submission, compliance, you know, whatever, right? I asked the question and guess what the answer I got, Terry? What was the answer? The answer I got was uh, you won because among all the bid uh, or other bidders, Ours was the one with no typos and no formatting errors. Wow. Can you believe it? <laughs> and ever since, we want to make sure the formatting is checked. Typos are checked. Right. Not every client is going to need. There are some times when, you know, the bits we submitted had a lot of formatting and typo issues. 
Mm -hmm. Although we still want, but with one client, we always want to make sure it is something we do based on that experience from that client. Right. Wow. That's something. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. Um, that that one little section, and that's what that one thing, and that's what they uh, chose when, and decided to to make you guys the the winner of the bid. That that's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Well, let's see. To kind of recap. In speaking with Mr. Gabe Hamda, today he talked to us about bidding habits at a glance, your repeatable bidding habits, increase your win rate. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and you discussed the what, you've discussed the why and the how. You gave us seven good tips for repeatable bidding habits that should increase, that will increase your winning rate. Again, no guarantees, but some good habits to form nonetheless. So thank you, Gabe, for joining us today. I do appreciate your time. And we will hope that everyone subscribes, hit the like button, and tune in next time for more tidbits and updates on how to win bid proposals. Thank you. Fantastic. So Terry, I just want to also share uh, with people who are enjoying this. Mm -hmm. So I think in the comment section, you know, when you, uh, when you go to our bid more uh, YouTube channel and you, you know, kind of you watch or you listen to this uh, uh, brief presentation, uh, please go ahead and give us comments, not only for us to feel fantastic about, you know, whether you like it or not, but also we want you to give us maybe your own habits, your personal habits, or your bidding habits, or the bidding habits that you like, and maybe other benefits from the habits that you have, and your own techniques. So, you know, people usually read the comment section uh, on a YouTube post. So we appreciate you, you know, coming back and sharing this with others and, uh, you know, giving us your knowledge because we don't know everything, right, Terry? We don't know everything. Absolutely, not at all learning we are evolving we want to learn right. from you and we want to give you more exciting topics so check back at bidmore youtube channel and we'll see you very soon enjoy your day thank you gabe enjoy your day everyone